the word I'm about to share with us, oh God, we ask that you use it to bless somebody. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. This month has been declared what? Our month? Wisdom. 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 I want to talk today on the, the grace of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Those of you who joined the prayer line a few times now, you would hear me mention something about the grace of wisdom. That wisdom has some level of grace to it that can make certain things that were ordinarily impossible, certain solutions that had looked elusive to become discoverable. Praise the Lord. If we go to Proverbs chapter 3 that we have in our you know, text, which has been the main focus, and I, I, I encourage you to read it. Let's go to verse 16. It says, Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Next verse. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. In other words, if a person wants to find peace, desire wisdom, godly wisdom, because there is human wisdom, okay? There is human wisdom and there is godly wisdom. I know when we talk about wisdom, we're talking about it in the absolute sense of where it should come from because there is a limitation to human wisdom human wisdom concerns itself with the things that has to do with solving the complex human problems within our society that's human wisdom but there is also a wisdom that comes from God and you when you have the one that comes from God, then it can transcend every area of your life. Because if you have only human wisdom and don't have godly wisdom, it means there is a deficiency. Are you following me? This is why even the smartest of people that are not born again, that don't know the Lord or that are atheists or whatever they are worshipping pagans and stuff like that they are not wise in God's eyes and he that winneth a soul and he that does not win a soul I didn't say it I just had to throw it in there it wasn't part of my message praise the Lord so if a person does not have godly wisdom which transcends areas, all areas of life, the person would not know what peace is. The person might begin to do things that end in noise and chaos and catastrophe and, and what have you. But the path of wisdom and there's a there's a personification here that I see. It's personified. This, the pronoun is used to express wisdom as a woman. Praise the Lord. In other words, as I understand it in my spirit, wisdom is able to birth forth and nurse. Come on, church. Wisdom is able to do what? To birth forth and nurse something. Like, like you birth forth a child, a child is born, doesn't it, some children are born, does not even know how to breathe. When, when our twin were born, one of them didn't know how to breathe or couldn't breathe, whatever. The, the, they had to put machine and 
We had to leave him in the NICU and, and go home with one and leave one there. Until the lungs were now mature enough and they were, you know, shooting steroids and all these things. You people that are nurses, you know what I'm saying. So until was nursed well to be able to breathe and and that child that looked like that then looked you know frail and miserable and all of that is now walking talking run go to school and all of that so there's a reason why god's word used this personification about wisdom because it is able to nurse, it's able to birth forth. Do you want to see something birthed in your life to give you reasons to testify? You need to desire godly wisdom. That the grace of that wisdom would help to redefine things concerning you. Praise the Lord. I mentioned that there is godly wisdom and there is, there is human wisdom. Daniel experienced a lot of that human wisdom. The humanness in his wisdom was what made him to become comparably better. Better in terms of all the governors that were in the land at the time. He also had godly wisdom. And that is the reason why he was better than the rest of them. Because he schooled with them. He schooled with them. He had similar training with them. But, guess what? When it comes to actual implementation of what they have learned, Daniel did better. Praise the Lord. So, Wisdom is not the absence of learning. Praise the Lord. There is a need for learning something, for, for acquiring some level of knowledge, because knowledge deals with the things that you are aware of within your immediate environment or as it is revealed unto you. But wisdom is able to make you take that knowledge for. Praise the Lord. So if we read in Zechariah 12 verse 10, the Bible says, And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace. So the spirit of God which is the spirit of wisdom, is the spirit of grace. I will pour it upon them. It says, and they shall look earnestly upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one who is in bitterness for his firstborn. So, it is the wisdom of God that makes men to feel sorry. To have remorse. To come to the point of saying, you know what? I need to change the way I think and the way I do things. Listen, if you have not gotten to that place, you need to. Because... It doesn't matter what happens around a person. What matters most is how receptive you are. How you are responding to God. That's the most important. For example, if Paul or Saul of Tarsus decided not to do what was instructed to him when he was struck blind on his way to Damascus, he would have remained blind. Are you following what I'm saying? He would have remained blind and wouldn't have been able to regain his sight. 
then he won't be an apostle and he won't be a law scholar either. Are you following what I'm saying? A person's response, how you respond, matters. You ask yourself today, am I responding with remorse? And I want to say this. Wisdom operates on the tendency of the mind. What kind of mindset do you have? There are people that are wise only in their own eyes. Whatever you tell them is immaterial, is not important. And now, that person will not go far. Are you following me? That person will not go far because... No one is like an island of knowledge. If you listen carefully, I'm talking about two things that has to do with godly wisdom and the human wisdom. The Bible makes us to understand in verse 19 of that scripture where we have been reading the, the Proverbs 3 that it was with wisdom that the Lord stretch out the heavens that's godly wisdom without any consultation to engineering and science wisdom of god can make a person to succeed where certain rules are not there that is it says the lord by wisdom had founded the heavens he stretched it out by his wisdom Praise the Lord. Speaking about the grace of wisdom. So there was a man. There was a man that needed to rule a people. And God asked him, what do you want? Ask what you want. If it is today, people would ask for all the level of affluence that will make them to become known as great kings. The Bible says, Solomon said to God, wisdom. Because at the time of the Jewish, you know, civilization, they have become exposed to the multiple and complex challenges that has become the problem of well-thinking people, of thoughtful men. He had become known that there is a need to get an advanced knowledge. Somebody say advanced knowledge. There is a need to get an advanced knowledge that is beyond the, the physical or human knowledge or human understanding of things. There was a need to be able to compete favorably or even at an advantage in dealing with the complex human problems and also being relevant in the spirit. And so because of that understanding, he asked God for godly wisdom because he knew that with godly wisdom, there is no limit to what he would be able to do. The Hebrew word for that godly wisdom is called chokma. C-H-O-K-M-A. Chokma. The kind that gives someone an advantage beyond the ordinary realms. He needed it. And so when he asked God for it, God said, ah, this one, you, you have sense. You've asked for something that is very deep. And because you did not look for how to become, you know, competitive with everybody else, but you want to be able to serve me well and serve your people, I'm going to give you additions. So if the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, it's not a lie. But don't seek God because of all these things. Because the kingdom shall not be added. The kingdom is not uh, an addition, an, an additive. It is all these things that are added, not the kingdom. There are people who come to God 
And they're seeking him for all these things. And I tell this church always that Jesus never died that we buy a car. He never died that we buy a house. He never died that we buy clothes. If you want to buy clothes, go to Macy's. He, 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 didn't, he didn't die so that we buy a house. If you want to buy a house, call a realtor. If your credit is bad, he will tell you what to do. He didn't die that you buy a car. If you want to buy a car, go to a dealership. Either you have a down payment or you have zero down. If you are pre-approved, that's fine. If you're not, then you know what to do to fix it. Jesus did not die so that we concern ourselves or we concern God with any of the things that are physical and mundane. Praise the Lord. So, Solomon's time was very challenging. In the Jewish philosophy, of course, you know what philosophy means. That's the love of wisdom. They tried to solve the complex human problems. And in most instances, the effort to solve a problem is, would result in a war, would result in one famine or one catastrophic situation or another. So it was there. Solomon knew that if God would help me to always know what to do. But there's a funny thing that we always talk about Solomon, when, not this Solomon now. It's the funny thing we talk about Solomon. I just want to throw it out there. And that um, one of the things that Solomon did to the extreme with the level of influence that the wisdom gave him was when you want to go to war with Solomon, Solomon will make it a duty to make sure he marries somebody from your house. So he becomes your in-law. <laughs> it was the reason why he had so many women. And Solomon never went to war. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whenever he knows of a possible war that is coming, a possible problem, he will make sure he finds a way. He used the wisdom the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, but people can use the, that is a good thing in the wrong way. That's true. He will just go and make sure you enter, become your in-law. The ones that were the potential wife were the concubines. The ones that he finalized the marriage were about 300 of them. So imagine he would have fought maybe 300 wars. Praise the Lord. Maybe it was wisdom used in the wrong way. I don't understand that. But I would say this. The grace of wisdom when applied in your life, it begins to give you insight. And if your mind is right, you would always come up with the best of decisions that will be to your advantage. Hallelujah. All right. So the Old Testament wisdom was, was different. Was different because in the Hebrew philosophy, they were concerned with the physical things. But the Old Testament wisdom, the wisdom that we call the Old Testament wisdom that God intends for us to have, which even today is still relevant, is the one that he gives. Not the one that you go to acquire from learning. So they had to go um, establish schools and they had people that were specialists. They called them the wise men. And they began to teach or indoctrinate other people based on what they know. And that is why most of them led or misled God's people. But the wisdom that God gives does not mislead the people. The Bible says all these parts are of peace and pleasantness. Hallelujah. So, there's a reason why the Bible says it is a principal thing. If it is a principal thing, it means it should occupy the number one position in your life. 
Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is what? The principal thing. So, in looking at the grace of wisdom, you should recognize it as something to be number one position because it is the principal thing. When something is the principal thing, it is something that drives a process. It is something that, that is a deciding factor. Why? Because it is a principal thing. So if you want to experience the grace of wisdom in your life, the number one thing you need to do is to allow wisdom to take the number one position. Godly wisdom. Now, I don't discount the importance of human wisdom, but I do know by experience that godly wisdom transcends all. But then, as you live your life in the realm of wisdom, knowledge will not be far from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two. Learn what would add value to your life. Learn what will add value to your life. There are some of us that we engage ourselves with things that are not taking us anywhere. If you're a person that wants to tap into or you know bring into your life the results of the grace of wisdom, then you need to intentionally avail yourself to learning what will bring value to your life. Or associate yourself with people that would add value to your life. Because if you are being depleted always, then there is the tendency that someday you will become empty. In fact, I don't even see the value of spending all night, say from 11 in the night until morning and you are just maybe on social media or just chatting with somebody. Whereas, there are people that use social media and make thousands a month. I saw a YouTuber's um, you know, account update. I was shocked. So while you are busy being the, um, what's it called? You are busy being the person that is watching the movie or the, the content. You are watching the content. They are making money. And this person lives in Nigeria. So making over almost $5,000 a month and it's not paying tax like you and I. Or high bills. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So why don't you be the one to make the channel let another person praise the Lord. So find the things that will add value to your life. I can't, I can't say that enough. Praise the Lord. Next point. Depart from evil. And let the fear of the Lord rule your life. Do what? And let the fear of the Lord rule your life. Bible says the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. You find that in Proverbs 28, verse 28, or no, Job 28, verse 28, or Proverbs 9, verse 10.
Job 28, 28, and Proverbs 9, verse 10. Depart from evil. You know why? It is not a wise thing for someone to have a negative mindset towards other people. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. It's not a wise thing to have a negative because the golden rule says what? We all know, we should know the golden rule, right? What does the golden rule say? Okay, we all know that. So it is not a wise thing. It's not a very wise thing. I'll stop there. So wisdom is inclusive of all virtue as it denotes wisdom with a strong ethical quality rooting itself in the fear of the Lord and applying the truths of divine revelation to the various relations and circumstances of life. So wisdom is rooted in virtue. Number four, be faithful to God and to your service. Do you want to see the grace of wisdom playing out? Wisdom which of course would not be there if you don't fear God. Because those who say there is no God, they have been counted as fools. So, be faithful to God and to your service. Why is that important? As God's people, if we are faithful to God, we should be faithful to our service as well. Because we cannot be saying we are faithful to our service and we're not faithful to God. Then it means we're not looking for any kind of, any kind of um, purpose in what we do. Praise the Lord. So, I look at the summation of the books that are of wisdom in the Bible. And these are what I found. The book of Job teaches men how to suffer well. The book of Psalm teaches men how to pray well. The big book of Proverbs teaches men how to act well. The book of Ecclesiastes teaches how to enjoy well. The songs of Solomon teaches how to love well. And a person who allows this to be a part of their experience from these books and what it teaches would understand that for what you want to see in others, you need to be the one to first carry that forward. Praise the Lord. Because you cannot give what you don't have. And now for all the minds and thoughts that have criticized the value of wisdom, I can say that all the philosophies of the world has not been able to put together any quality or any relevance of a message that can help a people to become better than whatever else they could have become. It is the wisdom of God that changes and transforms a man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, in closing, I want us to ask yourself or just think about it. Do I need or what is that thing that will make me to be the hindrance to myself? Because for all the things that I have said, the only person that can hinder you is you. And I want to say this. I'm not standing here to come and say, oh, it's the devil. The devil has his own place. But let's deal with the person. Because sometimes when we focus on a remote issue or problem to human problems, we miss the point. I told us some weeks ago, like when I was doing the Word of Truth studies, I said that when China built their, big, their great wall, 
and tries to prevent enemy from coming into uh, into invade the land. They forgot to build the character of the people. And so for about 100 years, they thought they had it all covered. But guess what? Each time the enemy entered and invade the land, for about three times they had an invasion, it was not that the enemy climbed over the wall. People inside opened the door. What does that tell you? That it is very necessary and more so important to build the character of a people. The enemy has his own place. But I tell you, if you build the character of the people and they know what to do and what not to do, none of them will open the door. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So sometimes we go to church and we get excited because we're speaking concerning the devil when in fact the biggest devil is within the person that is hearing the message. So it's not a far, a remote issue. It's an internal problem that a person needs to work on their mind and become better. The grace of wisdom. It is there. But can we open up our minds to it? And see things from God's perspective. Don't worry. The devil will take care of that. But can we walk on our minds? Can we walk on our mentality? How we view things? Can we begin to realign ourselves with God's purpose for our lives? Wisdom is the principal thing. The Bible says in all thy getting get understanding. Understanding was one of the things that bothered the Greek philosophers when they desired to know what to do in dealing with the complex problem of human mind. But they had a limit. But those of them who were God-fearing, they made tremendous progress in human history. Shall we rise? What do you want? The grace of wisdom for the possibility to take your life and accelerate you from where you are to where you need to be. Or you just want to do your own thing. It's a question we have to answer for ourselves. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you 